These are examples from section 4.3, the angle side angle, the angle angle side postulate and theorem, and the CPCTC for congruent triangles. Example 1. Which two triangles are congruent by the angle side angle congruence postulate? We have three triangles here. Triangle USV, Triangle EON, and Triangle TWA. They want to know which two triangles we can use the ASA congruence postulate with. Notice that in ASA, the side is included between the two angles. So going through these, two, these three triangles, notice that Triangle SUV has two angles marked with a side included marked. Triangle EON has two angles marked with a side included marked. But in triangle TWA, the two angles marked, the side between them is not marked. The side out, outside of that, it's non-included. So this is the triangle we won't, will not be using. So triangle TWA is not used, first of all. Then when naming these two triangles, we need to make sure everything corresponds. So I'm going to start with triangle SUV or VUS or VSU. It doesn't really matter how you start. I'm going to start with triangle USV <coughs> and state that it's congruent to this triangle, making sure that each vertex is corresponding. U comes first. U has one arc on it, so it corresponds with vertex E. So triangle E... Next, we have S. S is the vertex with no mark on it, so that would be N, corresponds with N. And then finally, V has two arcs on it, so it would be the O here. So we have triangle USV is congruent to triangle ENO by the ASA, or angle side angle, congruence postulate. Example 2, <clears throat> recreation. The design plan for a miniature golf course calls for the first hole to have two congruent triangle bumpers. Prove that the bumpers on the first hole shown meet the conditions of the plan. So this is the first hole uh, for this miniature golf course. Here's the hole. Here's the golf. This is where you put your golf ball. These three are bumpers, and these are the two triangular bumpers. Of course, the, the designer wants the bumpers to be congruent so that they ha both have an equal amount of uh, resistance to them when the ball, if the ball hits either side. So in other words, we want to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. They're stated right here. Starting with the given information and marking our drawing, side AB is congruent to side DE. Come over and mark your drawing. AB is congruent to D. Then we have angle A is congruent to angle D. Coming over to our drawing, we mark that. Angle A is congruent to angle D. An arc in each place. Notice we are setting up an angle and then a side. Then finally we have angle B and angle E are right or right angles. So we come over to angle B and draw a right angle symbol there and a right angle symbol on angle E. Before you make the leap to saying that they're congruent, we need to show or prove that they're congruent. Are all right angles congruent? Yes, they are by the right angles congruence theorem. So we say angle B is congruent to angle E now by the right angles congruence theorem. Or simply, right angles are congruent. All of this information was given to us. So now we know these two are congruent. If you'll notice in both triangles, we have an angle. We have two angles marked and the side included between those two angles in both situations. So we're obviously going to use the angle side angle congruence postulate here. So now we can we have enough information to show the two triangles are congruent. So we state finally that the triangle, the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by the angle side angle congruence postulate and we are done with the proof
the two triangular bumpers are congruent indeed. Example three, prove that the two triangles given are congruent using the angle-angle side theorem. The angle-angle side theorem, congruence theorem. We have two triangles here sharing one side. We're given that angle M is congruent to angle K. Come over and mark your drawing. M and K are congruent. Then we have side WM is parallel to side RK. So we come over here to WM and draw a parallel symbol there. And parallel to RK, parallel symbol here. And this is all given to us. Statement two, we could have written our given information into also. So this is just going to have four instead of five. I just put all the given in one statement, which is perfectly fine to do. Okay, so we have two parallel sides, and we have two angles showing that they're congruent. We only have one pair of angles showing congruent, so we need to decide kind of what direction we need to go if we're going to use AAS. We need the side not to be in between the two angles that we find. So this angle, we could either use this angle or that angle in this top triangle. And as long as we use this side right over here, away from this angle, it will be not included. So it's pretty obvious by now, you know that when a side is being shared, many times we can use the reflexive property to show that it's congruent in one triangle as it is in the other. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and state that. WR, side WR, which is right here, is congruent to, this side right here, is congruent to uh, side RW. Notice that RW and WR correspond. There's WR and then R, W, first and last positions. So this is the reflexive property of congruence. It's a lot, that's what allows us to make that statement. Now we either need this angle with this one to have AAS, or we need these two angles. Notice that we've got two sides that are parallel. So let's take our straight edge and extend the parallel sides or segments into longer segments. And then we need to decide which one of these lines or sides could be our transversal. If we let WR be our transversal, like this, and try to ignore these two, this is our transversal with our two parallel lines. Notice that we've got angle MWR and angle <coughs> KRW are congruent to each other because these are alternate interior angles. One of them's on each either side of the, the transversal and they're both inside the parallel lines. And if the lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So we can now state that angle M W R is congruent to angle K R W. And that again is by the alternate Interior Angles Theorem. Now we have what we need. We've got two angles marked and then a non-included side marked in the top triangle. Then we've got two angles marked and the non-included side of the second triangle down here. So now we can state that triangle WMR is congruent to triangle RKW by the angle, angle, side, congruence theorem. Another example. <clears throat> this time, we're trying to, instead of proving two triangles are congruent, we're trying to prove that two parts of those two triangles are congruent. So we start off like we normally do to proving any two triangles congruent. But near the end, we're going to do something a little bit different. 
Prove that just two parts of the triangles are congruent. Given angle KBC is congruent to angle ACB, so come over here and mark angle KBC, that would be this angle here, is congruent to, to angle ACB, that's this one right here. So these two corresponding are congruent. You notice one has been rotated around to give us the other. The other part of the given information is angle K is congruent to angle A. So come over here, angle K is congruent to angle A. Now, <clears throat> we've got, we're trying to prove that KB is congruent to AC. We're trying to prove that these two sides are congruent. What does that have to do with the two triangles? Well, if we can show that this triangle is congruent to this triangle here, once we establish that, then we can turn right around and use CPCTC, which of course stands for co corresponding parts of congruent triangles are themselves congruent. So once we show the two triangles are congruent, then we know all the corresponding pairs of parts have to be congruent. So once we state the triangles are congruent, then we can state that this side of this triangle is congruent to this side of that triangle. So this was given to us. Then we try to use one of the four postulates or theorem that we've discussed, SSS, SAS, AAS, or ASA, in showing the two triangles are congruent. We already have two angles in both that are marked congruent. So we're, probably, we're not going to use SSS or SAS because one of them doesn't have any angles and the other one only has one angle. So it's either going to be ASA or AAS. Notice that we have two angles here, two angles here. If we use this, which we can't show yet that these two are congruent, that would be using ASA. So we're going to have to, we're forced into using AAS, which is pretty convenient because CB is congruent to BC in the two triangles. So if we show that this is congruent to itself in the other triangle, we'll have angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. So that's our plan. Whereas let's go ahead and say CB in one triangle is congruent to BC in the other triangle. Make sure that those correspond. K, uh, CB and BC are switched around in both of these. So uh, <clears throat> it does work this way. So that's the reflexive property of congruence. Mark your drawing. Mark CB is congruent to BC. You mark one, you mark both. Now we have what we need to use AAS in both triangles. So we can now say triangle ACB is congruent to triangle KBC by the angle angle side congruence theorem. But normally we're finished at that point. We've proved two triangles are congruent. Here we want to show that two parts of the triangles are congruent. Two parts that we haven't shown yet. So now that we know that they're, the two triangles are congruent, every single pair of sides and every single pair of angles have to be congruent. For instance, now that we've shown that these two triangles are congruent, angle KCB now has to be congruent to angle ABC because those correspond. Side CK has to be congruent to side BA. And what we're trying to prove, KB is congruent to AC have to be congruent. So we'll, <clears throat> we can now say that KB is congruent to AC because since the triangles are, are now shown congruent, all the corresponding parts of those congruent triangles have to be congruent themselves. The corresponding parts of congruent triangles must be congruent. CPCTC. In example five, measurement, Thales, who was a Greek philosopher, is said to have developed a method to measure the distance to a ship at sea. 
he made a compass by nailing two sticks together. Okay, so here's a, a description of what he might have done. Here's a tower right on the shore. Here's the shore of the sea going this way. Here's a ship. And he wants to know what the distance is from the shore to that ship. And so he stood in a tower, some, something kind of like a lighthouse maybe. Stood at the top of the tower and he made a compass by nailing two sticks together. And he may have done something like this. Standing on top of the tower, he would hold one stick vertical and tilt the other until he could see the ship along the, sh the stick. So he would make sure that if, when he saw the ship off this direction, that that angle was the same amount as when he found some landmark on the other side that had the same angle. So he made sure that these had the same angle. This one, he locates a tree and that tree would be right here so these two angles here and here he made sure were congruent He's standing on top of the tower so once he does that he knows that these two angles are congruent he's going to find the distance between the ship and the shoreline where the tower is so in a in proof uh, style we have given angle TRS that's T R S is congruent to try to angle TRL or excuse me TRL and TRS are right angles because the tower stands at a right angle we assume that it couldn't go straight up in the air so that's one of our given pieces of information angle TRS is congruent to angle RTL. That would be these two angles here and here. So T, not TRS, angle RTS. So starting over here, we have angle RTS, this angle here, this angle right here. He made sure it was the same as this other one over here, which is. R T L. L is where the tree is. So these two angles are congruent and that was given to us. It's right here. So I'm starting with the second part of the given in the proof. Then notice that the tower is is but, uh, one side of both triangles. T R in one triangle is congruent to T R in the other one because one's just been reflected. So side TR is congruent to side TR, and that's by the reflexive property of congruence. So we can mark that. I'm going to put two tick marks through there. So now we have the, these two angles and these two sides, which are shared. We know that this is a right angle, and this is a right angle from this first piece. So let's write that in there. Angle TRS, this part right here, and angle TRL are right angles. That was also given to us. Since they're right angles, they must be congruent by the right angles congruence theorem. So now we can state these two are congruent. Angle TRS is congruent to angle TRL by the right angles congruent theorem. So now we know these two angles are congruent, these two sides are congruent and being shared, and these two right angles are congruent to each other. So which postulate or theorem is that? That's ASA, angle side angle. So by the angle side angle congruence theorem, we can now state these two triangles that are being formed, that he formed, are congruent. Triangle R, S, T, that's this one right here, R, S, T, is congruent to triangle R, L, T, R, L, T. Once we know there's are, these two triangles are congruent, by CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles, we know that this distance here 
from R to L, which he can very easily measure because it's on the land, must be congruent to its corresponding part from the bottom of the tower at the shoreline over to the ship. And then he gets his measurement. That would be RL, RS. So RL is congruent to RS by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So let's say he decided he, he measured off from the base of the tower to the tree was 100 feet. That would mean that he could show that it was 100 feet to the ship as long as he used that stick and made sure these two angles were the same.